Julia. Hi, Aya. How are you doing? So um, today I thought we would talk about um, art and yes. you have an artist in your family that you wanted to tell me about? Yeah, it was really cool because, um, well, you know, my grandma, she was an artist. She actually had painted, but she had a sister and I didn't know a lot about her siblings, but I was on Facebook the other day and I found out, um, well, you know, my dad had told me about this before, but it brought back the memory and I asked him. So anyway, she had a younger sister named Martha, who's a really good artist, like a very extraordinary artist. And she had told us on Facebook, me and my sister, that we were her grand nieces. So I asked my dad about it and he's like, oh yes, Martha, he remembered her because when he was a kid, she gave him a drawing book, a really neat book that I actually inherited too, that he gave to me. Unfortunately, I wish I still had the book. I don't know what happened to it, but it was a beautifully, simply illustrated, well, well, the text was pretty dense actually. It explained how to draw in perspective, but not like these other books that I find frustrating nowadays. It was an amazing book when I was nine years old. It taught me how to draw like perspective where I could draw mountains or draw the train tracks going into the distance. And it was a college level textbook, but as a kid just following that book, I taught myself how to draw you know, a street going to the horizon line or train tracks. And I had no idea that this had been her book, but yes, I thought maybe it'd been my grandma's book that, you know, she gave to my dad, but it turned out Martha, like this one artist, that's my great aunt, like she had owned the book. And I just thought that was kind of neat that it got passed down like that. But I wish I had the book here so I could show you because it's so much better than these drawing books on the market nowadays. I was like, wow, this book was so neat, the way that it explained how to do things. It was just very well, it, you know, written descriptions and everything. Yeah, I actually need to sort of brush up on drawing um, a road or a street going up to mm -hmm. the horizon. That's, I mean, that's just for a background. To, you know, most of my paintings are of people. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to do a scene on the street. And of course, before you can do that, you have to have a setting for the street. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, if I ever found that book again, I would definitely share it on a live stream, but I just don't know what happened to it. I think I lost it in a move, which it kind of makes me sad because I had thought about it. But now that I realize I haven't seen it for 15 years, I don't know why I'm like so attached to this book that I haven't seen in such a long time. But now that I know more of the story behind it, I'm like, I really wish I had that book now. Yeah, I, I carry books with me everywhere. And as you can see, I, I have you know, shelves and shelves full of books. And it's not all of it mine. It, I mean, not that I went and bought it at the store is what I mean, but a yeah, lot you I inherited. inherited. Yes. So, but that's yeah. really neat to have an amazing library like that. It's something that you can pass down, share with, you know, with future generations. I love that. Yes, yes. And, and even... <laughs> If the love of books skips a generation, you could still pass it on to the next one after that. Exactly. And also like, well, this is not art related, but like I was also talking about genealogy with my family. Like I think my immediate family, they're not really interested in genealogy, but I thought it was really cool because I found out like a cousin, she really likes it. And we were talking about genealogy today. So I think it's really neat. Like there could be a book in your library that maybe in a let's say a child wasn't as interested in it but maybe you have a great grand nephew or something they might benefit from that that's amazing yeah yeah so the, it's good to stay in touch with family uh yeah do you have any example paintings um from your great aunt or drawings or whatever i don't like i had looked to see if she posted things online but she didn't so i wish i had something to share I've drawn myself. I don't claim to be like a great artist, but I drew a bit. So that's what I, that's what I would have to share, unfortunately. Oh, well, that's great. Did you want to share something that you drew? I can, um, you know, my website is a little, like, I can show you what I'm working on right now. Oh, I'd um, love to see that. I'd yeah, love I'll show you. Where did the journal go? It disappeared. 
No, where's the giant? That's not Where is it? Okay. Where's the giant? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So it's just the same one, the harem sultan, but oh. I'm, I'm kind of slow. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just no. starting out again. I'm working on the hand because I want the hand to be correct. Uh -huh. So I want to take my time with this one. So yeah, it's the same drawing that I've been working on. Well, I, it's, yeah, it's lovely. I, yeah, I, well, you know, I'm happy with it, but I just, I have this vision for it. Okay, I'm going to follow that picture, the public domain picture that we were using that day. But what I want to do is make the hair long because I think I do want to do some long hair art like we were talking about. And mm -hmm. I was actually going to draw a picture of myself with long hair and I had started that, but I never finished that. So that's why I hesitate to share what I'm drawing right now because some people, they draw really quickly and they have lots to share. But I basically have my website with more finished artwork that people can look at, which is sweetberriesart.com. And I'm proud of what I've created there because, you know, I did put a lot of work into it. Yeah. Yeah, I like some of your uh, cat uh, drawings uh, or paintings, and uh, mm. uh, yeah, I, and I love that one about the was it a teapot or or uh, oh yeah, the, the roses flowers. in the watering can with a teapot. Water. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that's a very special because there is a teapot in there. It's a very special drawing, and there's a wonderful story about it. Um, I was like obsessed with me, me on the bounty. You know, I've told you I loved that story when I was a kid. So. Like in 2002 or something, I joined like this message board back before Facebook where people would talk about Pitcairn Island. And there was this lady on there named Wanda. Like she had actually visited Pitcairn. Like she went on a tour of the world. Like I think that's pretty cool, like on a ship. So she got to meet the people there. But she also loved art and she noticed that I like to draw. And she goes, You know, I really, she said she wanted to pay me to draw a picture for her sister. But I said, you know, if you just let me use the photograph and I can use the rights to it, like I would draw it for her for free and she could print it out. So that was the agreement because she had this really lovely little scene of a teapot and roses and a watering can. Yeah, it was a real neat little scene. So yeah, I did draw I, I that. I love that one. Yeah. yeah, I think that was one of my, it worked so well. Like there was just something because the photograph she took was amazing. And then I feel like I put a lot of effort into that. So, you know, I still do have it if you wanted me yeah. to ever find it. Yeah. So I can go look for it right now. I just haven't okay. thought about it in a minute, but did you want to talk about anything when I was looking for it? Or Okay. I, I will talk about uh, an artist that I met by chance. And mm -hmm. you keep looking for that. So Definitely. I feel that if you are interested in art, um, whether you're an artist yourself or not, whenever you travel, you will get a chance to meet artists. And this is my story of how that kind of happened to me by chance. Mm -hmm. um, so I used to teach uh, in, in a few colleges in Taiwan. And the first college I taught at was uh, in Taipei County. Um, it was in Dan Shui. And wow. Dan Shui is, is a very nice, beautiful place um, by the sea. Um, and anyway, uh, toward the end of the semester, my students took me and a few of the other um, foreign professors to a place called Jiu Fen. I might be mispronouncing it because I never get the tone right on anything, but Jiofen means um, nine portions. Uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it's just a place where a lot of artist type people uh, congregate in Taiwan. And um, they were, the students told me that there was a crazy old man that I just had to see. And... <laughs> All he ever did was he um, he created ghost masks, you know, and they were jabbering it and talking about it, and they were so excited about it, and I didn't know what they were talking about, 
uh, what are ghost masks and what does it mean that he creates them all day long? And they said, the walls of his house are, are covered with ghost masks. And I did want to see if we could share that picture because I do have a picture of that. Oh, yes, I can go to and do that for sure. So yeah, me... I'll keep talking. Yeah, no, uh, keep telling the story, please. Yeah, so I, I went there with my students and there was the guy and he, he sort of enjoyed pleasing uh, tourists. And uh, so the students told me he was crazy. So he started to act crazy. He took a flashlight and he shined it on his face and he smiled and he let us take pictures of him with all the ghost masks on his face, which were made of clay. And yeah, they were kind of um, supposed to be scary or funny or something or both. Um, and they were all over his walls. And my student said that that's all he ever did. But I started to look in the house and I saw in a corner, there were some canvases. So I asked about it. And of course my Chinese wasn't very good. So I, I asked the students about it and they asked him and he said, oh yes, I used to be a painter. And, um, and then he took out this book and this book is full of his paintings. Mm -hmm. um, this is him as a younger man. I don't know if you can see him very wow. well. And um, then I can share some of his paintings with you. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really something. Um, there's another one. I think he liked the color red, don't you? Yeah, I do think he had a, a fixation with it, maybe. Like, but doesn't red mean prosperity and good luck and good fortune yes, in Chinese yes, culture? Does. And I love, okay, I feel like I loved all colors all my life. Like, I love every color. Yeah. But some people are like, oh, I can't wear this color. I can't wear that. But I kind of like how in China and India they love color. And in Taiwan, like, color, it's okay to like different color. Does that make any sense? Yes, of course uh, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so this one from 1983, which is in powder, color, and crayon. Um, oh, wow. The past thing will not be repeated anymore. So it means the past will not return. That's the meaning of this painting. That's interesting. Does that have something to do with like the history of people that, you know, were capitalists having to leave China to go to Taiwan like is, is there some story behind that I wonder like I having to I I don't know but this one is quite interesting uh it's called Taoist High Priest from 1981 and please don't take offense at what looks like a swastika because it doesn't mean that's anything. not what it is and by right. the way in India, they do use the swastika because it's one of their ancient symbols. It was, yeah. you know, other people that appropriated that symbol and tarnished its actual meaning. That's the truth, right. really. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is a Taoist priest. Wow. That's a really neat painting. I think he was quite an interesting painter. It's too bad that people didn't appreciate his paintings, really, or... It seemed like maybe, did he make money selling the mask or was that just something he did to have fun? He did sell the mask and I did buy one mask, but it kind of fell apart on me. It was just made of clay. Uh, but oh, yeah. I didn't finish telling you the story about this. Oh, so book. sorry. Um, yeah. What happened was I said, can I buy the book? Because I was much more interested in the book of his art than I was in the ghost masks. And... Mm -hmm. He gave it to me for free. He wow. didn't charge me. So I have this book and it means something to me. Yes, that, well, I think it's really special. And I know why he gave it to you because he saw in you somebody that would appreciate his art, whereas everybody else was just like, he's the crazy mask guy. And he was probably excited that you asked him about his art. Yes. And so um, if you can share, uh, Right the now. article, yes, I do have it up now. I was just um, letting you, yeah, wanted you to finish telling the story, but let me go in to the right 
page just to make sure I have the right page up. Okay. That can, is it yeah. already visible? Yeah. In a, in a new, well, I thought I could anyway. Maybe I can do this. So it kind of cuts off part of it, but you can scroll through and kind of see oh, him. Oh, that's good. That, that's really good. Yeah. I think that's really good. Like, so you see the yeah. flashlight, and yeah. I think he picked one of the more horrific ones. I think <laughs> yeah. he really liked playing the character. I think he knew how to market himself very well. Yes. That's my take for it. <laughs> right. But he was, in fact, a much more serious artist than you would think if all you saw was that. Yeah, exactly. Like... It kind of reminds me of like, okay, I know everybody's like, Howard Stern's a shock jock, but he didn't always used to be. He was considered kind of a nerdy, boring, like commentator on the radio. And the only way he was able to keep a job was, oh, all of a sudden we start saying all these shocking things and people listen to us and we can keep a job. So sometimes people reinvent themselves. Like right. maybe, and I think he reinvented himself. I think maybe he had a painting career and it just wasn't very lucrative. So, hey, oh, people will buy masks for parties and they'll come out in the countryside. Like, I don't know the whole backstory, but to me, this seems like it's a character he enjoyed playing, really. Yes, and if you are ever in Taiwan, I would recommend that you go to Jiu Fen and ask for the ghost mask maker. I would love to know where he is now. You know what would be kind of cool? I mean, I doubt he speaks much English, but if he did, that would be interesting to have him on a live stream. Well, uh, we could have him on a live stream and have uh, somebody else interpret if that was necessary. You see, that would be really neat. So um, I also did find the picture of the roses and the watering oh, can. Yes. Do you want yes, please. Let's look at those. Okay, so let's go back to make it bigger. Drag across. So this is a post that I wrote back in 2012. I've been doing like on and off, like on my art website since 2008. It migrated to a different host in 2011. But this isn't the best photograph of it. It's just showing because back in Honestly, I think my photography skills have evolved. I just wanted to show what it looked like in a frame back in 2012. So this shows the beginning progress of how I drew it with pencil. And this is kind of my technique. And then I'll go in with colored pencil. And I really liked how I used um, browns, burnt ember, burnt sienna, and white um, colored pencils to kind of create that wood background. That was just something, I thought that effect was kind of cool when I did that. And this shows what the final, I love that. That's what, it, yeah, that was, that's not the best. Like I do have a scan of it too. I could share that in a blog post later. But yeah, that was one of my favorite drawings. It was based on a photograph that Wanda took and the story behind it was she wanted, you know, a birthday gift for her sister. And I said, you know, I'm not gonna charge you if you let me use it in my Zazzle shop. And she goes, yeah, that's fine. So that was kind of the agreement between us. So she got a free, you know, art for her sister's birthday. I found out a few years ago, she passed away. I was really sad because oh. I noticed that, like, I would have loved, I think she actually may have came on a live stream with us. She was a really interesting lady. Um, Cause I was kind of thinking about, it. I didn't want to say anything because you know how I haven't had the best of luck asking people, but I kind of thought about Wanda because I thought, you know, she actually talks to people and she is really engaging and she had a lot of interesting stories. And I thought she could have told us about her world travels, but then I went to look at her page and I found out she had passed away. So, but I think this is a nice tribute to her because she created a beautiful photograph that gave me the idea to draw that. So I kind of, I'll always remember that about her and how she lived pit Karen history. And she was just a really interesting person. Well, I mean, if she has passed away and if this is not, you know, any infringement on her privacy, would you like to share her first, her full name so people would know who you mean? Um, Wanda Delishabi, like I can show on Facebook. I don't think it's any infringement on her privacy. I'm going to stop sharing so I can okay. go in and say her name correctly. Her okay. last name is, let's see, 
because I never said her last name that often. Let's see. Yeah, her name was Wanda De La Shabby. Okay. I just want to make sure I say her last name correctly. I just always knew her as Wanda, and she was a friend that I talked with online. So, Hi. yeah, it was a nice little story. I, I just, it just kind of shows you, like, you can talk to people online, and you might not know them in real life, but they can inspire your art and things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's wonderful to get to know people and it's always a little bit sad when you find out that they're not in this world anymore. I was definitely disappointed about it. The thing that I really liked about her is I feel like, okay, it was from a time when like you could be online and people would disagree about things, but it wasn't like everybody was defined all about politics. Like I feel like it was a more interesting educational creative time because People had different views, but we would talk about art and history. And I feel like today you can still find that on Facebook, but it's a little hard because sometimes you look at the feed and it's not even about people's personal lives anymore. It's not about anything they're doing or about learning. It's just always about some political. And I'm thinking I miss, it just reminds me of a time that I think was a little bit healthier. You know? Yeah. When people didn't unfriend people just because, they said something. <laughs> yeah, you know. and that group, like, there were so many different people in that Friends of Pitcairn group from all around the world. People had different views. They didn't always agree, but, like, I think there was one guy, he was, like, super liberal, and I'll give you this example. He was so liberal, like, he was kind of crazy. Like, he went to the IRS office, and he pulled down his pants, and he, like, mooned it. But the well, conservative people on there, yes, it was really interesting. Okay, like, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't consider that necessarily a liberal action because the liberal. I don't think it's really liberal like the saying, IRS. <laughs> maybe it was more radical. Like maybe I'm yeah. saying it wrong. Like, but he just okay, more radical, more libertarian, but just funny, okay. like off. He was like a hippie guy, okay? Like okay. he smoked yeah. pot and he was just very out there. But then there'd be conservative people that were seven day Venice. Like there were all sorts of people on that group and they just liked the history of Pitcairn and they would talk about it. So I was like, but I don't know if you could have a group like that nowadays. <laughs> yeah. I don't I I think a lot of things have been lost. Uh, during this era of the mask when we're all expected to be so agreeable that we never disagree with what the majority are doing. Yeah, exactly. And this isn't exactly art related, but I've been talking to this woman. She's so interesting on YouTube and she will tell me about history and she lives in Sweden. And I actually, I thought, well, hey, why don't you do videos? Like, why don't you share that you like Viking history? And she told me, like she's afraid to because of she thinks she might lose her job or something because okay she believes in the pagan religion of the vikings and some people told uh -huh. her uh-huh like i guess they got kicked out of the coffee shop in sweden for talking about vikings because some people said this this conversation might offend somebody and i'm like really are you kidding me so she it's like i i feel like i can't talk about my history and culture around people because like well she'll talk about it in the comments but she feels like she can't do it publicly because she's like what are the repercussions and you know because of all the you know, wanting to be agreeable, but I don't see how Viking history and culture would offend anybody or make somebody feel excluded. They were just, I don't know. That's kind of sad. Well, I, I don't know. I actually, I think the Vikings kind of uh, enslaved a lot of people and yeah. especially the Slavs. Yeah. Uh, and right now it's not politically correct to understand that all people in every culture have had slavery before and that white people have been enslaved. And all 
they definitely have like the whole drawing about harem sultan what is that about it's yeah slavery and right. her becoming free but i didn't mean to interrupt what you were saying but you're absolutely right it's so true oh. so i think that's why we're not allowed to talk about the vikings we're not allowed to talk about uh privateers um there are a lot of things that they just don't want us talking about I'm not going to stop talking about history and art and culture because I think that's when you get censorship and that was supposedly the thing that liberals were so against was censorship, right? They didn't like censorship, remember? That was yeah. their whole their whole thing. They still talk about not banning books, not doing this, but they're doing just that now when you say, well, you can't have a movie be on television, which is a form of art, by the way, that was a based on a book that somebody wrote and you're saying it should just be in a museum so how does anybody know about that book or that movie if it's just living in a museum especially since right now people can't really go to museums yeah yeah or like another thing i think about museums like who gets to decide what art is in a museum that's another thing too like this is kind of art related i just think like but i don't want to go down that path of it i just want to say i don't think everybody agrees with the direction we're going <laughs> well i mean if the museums are private then the answer is very simple the owner of the museum gets to decide what goes into the museum I to decline that <laughs> it was labeled potential spam well oh, that's that, yeah been happening happened i think what it is is it's a new feature they have on the phone because so many people's numbers are being spoofed by these well you know the whole story behind that yeah so i'm just not going to worry about it right now <laughs> okay but yeah i do i'm just concerned about the direction it's good like if it's a private museum yes but if it's a public museum, doesn't everybody have a little bit of say in what it should be in a public museum, I think, to some degree? But I'll leave it that discussion up to others. Well, I, I'm not sure there should be public museums paid at public expense because some of the people, you know, and it doesn't matter what it is, there's going to mm -hmm. be somebody who's offended by every piece of art. And that's okay. You don't have to buy art that offends you. You don't have to look at art that offends you. But if you are taxed to pay for that museum, then you are ending up funding stuff that offends you. So the best That's way true. to avoid that is simply not to have museums public museums. Have public yeah. Expense. yeah, that probably would be a better option, I'm guessing. You know, why not just have more private museums, you know, essentially? And then the number of people who actually like the art will determine whether that museum prospers or not. Yeah, that's a good. I'm just kind of thinking about that, like with what's going on right now. But what did you have any other ideas about art at the moment or things like related to the ghost man? Well, I, I could show you a few more of his um, art pieces. This one is called Shouts Coming From Everywhere. Oh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> it's kind of earth the real and ghostly yeah that's true it's from 1979 interesting um, and this one is called dreamlike phenomenon those are lanterns right yes the, yes they that's are. neat i love chinese lanterns something about them they're just so beautiful and this one is called strange emptiness interesting that's really neat i like how it's panoramic as well yeah yeah they, they none of these paintings seem to have any specific dimensions that they are required to have no, and I don't think a painting or a drawing has to have that. It, the panoramic, it really, it seems to do well in that particular composition. This one is called Great Trial. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
Oh, and this one, Western Fearful Soul. Okay, so this is a Westerner from his perspective. This is what <laughs> Is that Van Gogh? It almost looks like Van Gogh. Yeah. That's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Western Fearful Soul. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It kind of taps into like M. Butterfly kind of vibe to me. I kind of get that from it. <laughs> oh, this one, I don't know. It's called Lofty, but I don't know. Do you think this guy is high? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of smoky smoking going on there. <laughs> A lot of art and a lot of music, like people are like, yeah, like that was kind of what people made going back to censorship. Typical, I want to ban music. Oh, well, were you in a rock band when you were a kid? Oh, whoops. Like <laughs> a lot of songs like actually would have been banned on the radio back in the 60s, but they had to use code words to refer to those type of things. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I just, it's art related. I'm just, I'm, it just brought up that thought anyway. Okay. This is probably a self portrait, but it's, it's called self portray and it's from 1979. Oh, interesting. It has like a French kind of abstract vibe, would you say? Uh -huh. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay, and this one is Offering Incense to Buddha. Nice. Very interesting. Okay, I don't really know the Chinese um, story behind this, but this one is called Presenting to Feng Shen Pun. So anybody who knows Chinese, um, this character from Chinese history or mythology would know what this is about. Interesting. Now my friend, she's Vietnamese, um, but they're technically Buddhist. She's not like a really hardcore Buddhist, but whenever the Chinese New Year would start, like she would do this thing that I thought was pretty neat. She like if we had a disagreement or something she would call me on the chinese new year and be like let's start again like something about airing your differences and i thought that was kind of interesting instead of the new year's resolution i kind of i don't know the whole thing behind that maybe you know a little bit more about the chinese new year and how they... i don't know what i know is it sounds a lot like the the jewish new year you're you're also supposed to make up with people that you broke up with before I like it and I think that's part of why I've talked to her for so long because she just we never held any kind of grudges against each we don't agree on everything but she's just really amazing like that I can keep talking to her and we would just it was kind of neat so this one is called history and it was painted in 1983 so the painting is called history interesting history like it looks like they almost look like Rapa Nui like the little things on Rapa Nui Easter Island like the Manoi they kind of look like those big stone statues almost but I'm sure this is Chinese related well I think those are weapons over here at the bottom okay I just I see a face like not the weapon part but I see like some faces they just remind me of those stone statues for some reason okay yeah well, there are also characters out here. So, for instance, I believe this character is a horse character. Interesting. Okay. Ma. Huh. Okay, and this one is Best Gift for Wishing a Happy Birthday from 1983. Huh. That's interesting very different and eclectic it's kind of like not every not one painting is exactly the same no no of course yeah so well, 
some people have like a certain style, but I think he has a certain style, but he does many different genres and he seems to go through different painting styles as well. Yeah, and this is called The Heavenly Kingdom of Peace. Huh, interesting. So, yeah, I, I think that gives you an idea of what his paintings were like, and also the period during which he was doing that. Yeah, no, definitely. I kind of see it was like the late 70s into the early 80s kind of era. It seems like there's some history going on there, too, of references to Western interaction with the East. It's very fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So... That was an interesting time. Um, I I would really like to, I would like to know if he's still around. I'm going to look later because I hadn't thought to look, but maybe there's some references to him online these days. I'm yeah, that, that would be nice. I, I think people might still be visiting him at Joe Fenn. So if huh. you want to, you could look for tourism attractions in Joe Fenn um in taiwan yeah i definitely think i'm going to do that so when it comes to art like i actually want to get into it more because i know i've been like myself i haven't been hardcore about it but i actually do like it when i start drawing and get into it i just i'm not really quick about it but i love how you're painting like something almost every other week or something that's pretty neat didn't you just paint something recently well i i just the one that I finished was uh, for the little boy who didn't catch a fish. And I don't have it in this room. I have it in uh, the other room. So I probably okay. won't show it right now. But no, I understand, yeah. I, I think I found a little sketch from a long time ago. Maybe I can find that and show you. Okay. Meanwhile. I was just cleaning uh, things up, and I don't know if you can see the faces on these. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I like how you cut it out. That's awesome. Yes, at one time I thought this might be an illustration for Ping and the Snarkily people, but, I, you know, I didn't actually use it. But it's still pretty cool. It has, like, a dimension to it being cut out. It kind of... You could prop it up once i don't know like yeah yeah so this girl is is probably supposed to be ping and she's laughing and this is probably olivia oh yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah so you know our artwork if you have it around the house you you may have scribbled something and thought that you threw it away and then you find it later I do, like, I have some sketchbooks, but it's stuff that I didn't really complete, so I just, oh, I've I looked at them recently, I but. I might have a sketchbook. I could share that with you. Okay, sure. Oh, you remember I used to do videos like this, so. Oh, was... yeah, I remember that. That was so cool. I love that, yeah. That was uh, supposed to be Marlene McCollum. The, but it was really the parrot lady. But it turned out, is she still around, by the way? Because I haven't heard oh, anything yeah. about her. Yeah, uh, she's got like 200,000 viewers. And okay. he now has a new line of uh, toys for parrots. Interesting. Okay. I just, she hasn't popped up on my feed. I only used to see her because you had mentioned her and I looked at her video once and then it just fell out of my feed after that. So I just hadn't thought about it. Okay. Well, I don't watch her all the time, but my parrots really like her. <laughs> I'm sure they do because it's parrot related. <laughs> right. So do you remember who this is supposed to be? It's Mr. Rogers because we went in and saw the movie and then we reviewed that, which by the way, people could watch the live stream where we talk about that if they're interested. Right, exactly. And I don't think it actually looks like Mr. Rogers, but I tried. I oh. thought it, it got the essence of it. I thought it was fun. Guess who? 
it's me and i like that it's based on that one um photograph with my hair down and the black top and it turned out good i liked it my friend jennifer actually said on facebook she thought it was a good drawing so so good she's actually i asked her i said you should come online you should talk about your art she's very shy she won't but she's oh. been doing more art now because of the pandemic and she's starting to sell more art um i guess on ebay so that was kind of neat that's wonderful oh yeah, that's and then there's this thing i'll tell you the truth this is a fail i was trying to come up with um sort of icons for um emojis do you know that I am eligible on my other channel uh, to have memberships, but I'm supposed to come up with my own emojis and I don't know how to do that. That's interesting. Um, do you have to have like 30,000 subscribers? Like how, yeah, how does yeah. that work? Yeah, wow, you're getting that... there. You're getting there. You will be there. I don't know if I will though, because okay, the membership thing, I get it, but okay. Maybe for you it would work, but for me, I'm like, I don't know. I don't think my audience is going to buy memberships. I just don't. Well, I, I never opened it up for memberships because I couldn't do the technical stuff of coming up with emojis. This I was just, what it seemed like. Okay, with the membership, it seemed like you created content only for people that were paying to be members. Is that correct? Well, it doesn't have to be like that. It could be that they could see it a week ahead of the other people. Oh, yeah. okay. See, I think that would work really well for somebody who's a very curated, probably in your case it would. Just for me, I don't think that's going to work because I like to just do live streams and I'm kind of unedited unless I'm in the mood to make an edited video. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know how to draw emojis. If you can teach me, uh, <laughs> maybe. I could think of something, but I don't know. I don't even think emoji. I kind of don't use them <laughs> I don't know I think there's a technical aspect to it they have to be a certain size a person, certain pixel number and oh. all stuff. so maybe yeah it's very technical I don't currently have a program for drawing you know for drawing uh, digitally I don't know how to do that I think you just need it but you have to pay for it it's an extra thing like a digital drawing pad but i don't really like them very much by the way because mine didn't do very much like i used it but it was very limited i i, I just like i, I don't know. know this is just so crazy because i didn't know what to do to get an emoji <laughs> <laughs> that's cute though it looks like a teddy bear i was just like struggling so hard trying to figure out how do you draw an emoji and of course it looks like i'm a baby and i don't know how to do anything but guess what who this is um Nassim Taleb yes it looks a lot like him <laughs> yeah so I'm better at drawing Nassim Taleb than I am drawing emojis I'm kind of more interested in the drawing of Nassim Taleb anyway I think he's more interesting than an emoji <laughs> oh that's neat yeah that was during Inktober oh yeah um is this like have something to do with like a story or yeah it's um it's actually in china mm -hmm. and there's this red I'm trying to remember what it's called red sea or it's not red sea but uh, it's um this lady is jogging in a red coat and the in the background there is this red stuff and I think it's water but I don't remember it was like something growing in the water that was red interesting like it's kind of mythical maybe or is it a real no 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 I actually what I do when I I'm looking for models is I find models in um, you know bizarre uh, Harper's Bazaar magazine oh yeah yeah that's a really beautiful yeah so they had this model they were saying that a red coat was all the rage i didn't know what that meant but anyway and and they had this model running dressed only in a red coat <laughs> and uh huh. it, she had she had that background of the red whatever it was that was growing there oh interesting that's different <laughs> Oh, 
Oh yeah, that kind of looks reminds me. That's you, your mom, right? I think it's my mom on a bicycle. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I see that. her face and your face in the drawing a little bit. Like your mom looks like you, so but it does look like her for sure. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, I think I look like my mother a little bit. That is supposed to be Hannibal, right? Yes. Yeah, Very and it's based neat. on a bust of Hannibal that um, exists. So cool. something happened to his eye. That's why his eye looks like that. It's interesting, though. We learn a little bit about history just looking at the drawing. That's um, so right. Yeah. And is it Deegan or one of the? Yes. Yes, it's Deegan. Yeah. That's cool. Bo just wanted to hug him, but Dagan wasn't sure he wanted to be hugged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I remember this model lady. It was very sultry, very neat. Yeah. That's kind of Halloween y. Right, because it, it was October 31st. Yes, exactly. 2019, I, so nobody's wearing a mask. <laughs> oh, apparently Halloween's still big this year, but I was wondering everybody's buying costumes to dress up with each other on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's enough. I think that the rest are from 2018, and we've probably covered enough art as it is. I think we probably have, but maybe by next time, if we do another art segment, I will have done some more art and I'll have more to show myself. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to participate in, in October this year because no, it was I, very stressful. I, I feel like the thing about Inktober is the people were a little fanatical about it, and I just can't do a drawing in one day. I don't know how people can do that without feeling really stressed out. Even if you're an artist, this one guy said, I do my art at, during the day for work, and he would rush home to do his Inktober drawing. I was thinking, why are people doing that to themselves? Like, one guy said he was drinking lots of caffeine just to participate. Well, the first year that I participated, I drank lots of caffeine and ended up you in the hospital. You kind of have to. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's almost like an unpaid career in a way. Like, it, that's great. Yeah. I did do something similar. I did the A to Z um, challenge, but I'll be honest with you. I was kind of disappointed by the third year I did it because you know what happened was my blog got um, unlisted in the search engine because they encouraged us to go comment on other people's blogs so even if it was something i wasn't really interested in i was like i'm playing along i'm playing along because we're supposed to like blog on a different topic with that letter that day and i blogged on somebody's blog it was like about sports or something and i'm not saying it was this particular person but all of a sudden my blog wasn't showing up in the search engines anymore and i think Google thought my blog was spam or something because I was like somebody report. I don't know what happened, but that just turned me off the A to Z challenge. I'm like, what's the point of doing that if, and then you would get some commenters, but you could tell they weren't really interested in what you were doing. It was just like, oh, go to this blog, go to that one. And I, so I don't, I don't really see the point of that challenge. And I got really burned out because it was the same thing. I'd have to make sure I had a blog post every single day on that topic. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm not getting paid yeah. to do this. <laughs> no, no. And even if you are paid, you know, right now I am being paid to make videos uh, about uh, the coldest water. But, and I, so I was doing one a day because you're not allowed to do more than one a day. And actually, I mm -hmm. think that's a very good policy. That that's a not, great policy. We don't need yeah. like five, like can you imagine if somebody made you know, they could get a little crazy, I think. Right, but then I realized I was getting really tired. Um, yeah. I can't even do one a day. So it's okay. Um, you know, I'm not going to not be paid because they pay by the number that you do and you're supposed to submit 10 at a time. When I have mm -hmm. 10 done, I will submit them and I don't have to stress out about this. I think that's a good policy. It seems, I think that's a really great program because I, I do like their product but I think you would get really burned out very quick if you had to do that repetitively every day of course yes uh, and I'm, I'm not going to do it every day I'm going to do it when the mood strikes me also some of these are highly edited vid videos and it takes me a day to film and then another day to edit 
So, you know, it's just not going to happen that fast. That's the thing about edited videos. Like there were some videos that I made that were very edited. Some of them were art on my old channel. Some of them on the new channel about hair. There's extremely edited videos and I would push myself to film something and edit it and not sleep much that night. And it still wouldn't get that many views. And then I do a live stream and it gets more views. So I think edited videos are great, but they don't always seem to be the ones that are the most popular in my channel. Oh. Like there's one. Yeah. There's, there's one, one that's a viral video that's edited, but then my other videos, they're not viral videos, but all my other like highest ranking videos are ones that are not edited. So I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, I have two viral videos. They're not as viral as yours, um, uh, but they are not edited. They're just grooming videos with Bo, and the for, the one that has the most views, which is uh, like eight million views, um, it it was you know me being very tired and Bo grooming me and I wasn't trying to do anything and he wasn't trying to do anything and uh, I just you know it's like under two minutes and I posted it and didn't edit it at all and it got all those views so so I think it just happens to be the energy or the mood or it resonates with people I think that's what makes people watch I don't think everything has to be highly curated and I'm gonna the reason I'm gonna say that is because I feel like it's becoming an obsession nowadays with people like they can't even talk to other people because I think this is the vibe I'm getting is people they kind of clam up like when they have to have one-on-one -on -one conversation because like oh I can't edit my words out and with videos I've seen people delete their whole Facebook account because they said there was a picture on it that didn't look correct or something <laughs> Like why would they do that i don't know and this one lady she made a really good video i don't want to criticize her but i liked her video okay she accidentally uploaded the raw footage it was a hair video on how to do like a bun or something but because she accidentally uploaded the raw footage she goes oh my gosh nobody can see me like do that she deleted it she thought nobody would like it but a lot of people actually really liked it so she re-uploaded the edited version but i thought it was really interesting i just thought it was kind of fun to see her unedited like I don't but I, I'm different than other people like I actually like when we do live streams or watching live streams because I like more candid like what's happening not like oh it has I'm not against edited videos I just don't feel like they're everything right right uh, yeah I have lots of unedited videos on both of my channels and I also have some edited videos so I, I do both well, I, yeah I've done both but like just what I'm saying is when it takes and it's not that I necessarily get more views for those that's all but I had some very edited art videos and the views weren't very high <laughs> yeah well uh, it's been great talking to you about art and sharing art with you and I'm going to do a minimal amount of editing and upload our live, oh, live not live stream but our conversation yes definitely you too. You too, Julia. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.